Hey everyone, welcome back to Sofa and Chill. And yesterday, we're going to be watching another episode in the truly spectacular, fabulous, amazing Band of Brothers series that I'm getting close to the end of. Ah, I don't even want to think about that just yet, yes. This one's episode 8, and it's The Last Patrol. So yeah, I'm truly, truly heartbroken that it's going to be coming to an end. Um, it just seems to have flown over. I've become really attached emotionally to all of the, the characters. Um, knowing that they're real people as well. It's, it's like you have mentioned uh, in the comment section, you do get, you just get enthralled and just and you just get immersed in, in, in the story and in the characters. And then because it's done in such a great way and it's been written in such a great way um, that you just become, yeah, extremely attached to each uh, individual character. Now, a lot of the shows have focused on specific, you know, specific people as they've gone when they did the one with Lipton, one with Doc Raw. So you do find yourself kind of, yeah, you kind of find like, you feel a bit of like a kinship with them. Um, so it, the fact that it's coming to an end, is, it's heartbreaking, but it's been, it's, it's been the, one of the, well, the most truly remarkable um, series that I've ever seen. Um, I haven't had a series affect me emotionally like this one at all. So yeah, it's just a testament to, to Spielberg and Hanks and, the guys and the story itself of the of the airborne yeah it's just been amazing now i do understand that apart from the 10 episodes um there is a, a documentary that came out in 2001 called we stand alone together i will be watching that a lot of you have mentioned that i should um especially if i like to see you know the real people um i haven't googled it because i'm sure if i google that uh, i'm gonna I, I don't want any spoilers as to who survived and, and all that you know you know you know if you've watched the if you've watched kind of the journey so far you'll understand what i mean i don't want to google anything but i will be watching that and putting it on the channel just for those of you who have asked anyway so yeah um speaking of the last episode um yeah i i, I it did almost break me that um i me emotions at the end trying to talk it was, it was a tough one it was really tough after i digested it um yeah uh, the, the the thing that jumps out the most in that episode is what happened to Bill Garnier and Joe Toy, the two very very big and important characters. Uh, the fact that they were both badly injured, the, the survived though, and um, I don't know the story of that yet. I don't know how long they survived or whether or what happened to them. So I will be what I will be googling that myself afterwards watch it when I've seen this. But um, a lot of you have put in the, the comment section that he did that the, you know that they survived, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's an amazing thing. Uh, a lot of you have mentioned as well that there's real footage of, you know, the uh, of of the woods in in uh, just outside of Foy uh, that people actually go to now. It's it's somewhere on my to-do list. It has to be done. Even apparently somebody said there's a, you know, there's where where Shifty Powers actually shot uh, the person, uh, the, the German through the window um, when they when they attacked Foy. So I'm looking forward to watching all of this footage and seeing it all and. I just I don't want to let it go yet. I mean, I know it's still I've still got weeks away, and as I've mentioned as well regarding the Pacific, we'll be putting the Pacific on directly after this show because there's a um there's a new there's a the third part's coming out soon. Masters of the Skies or something I've heard. Um, it's like kind of like the third installment, Band of Brothers, the Pacific, and then Masters of the Skies, and apparently it follows the bomb them um, the the bombers uh, during the war during World War uh, during the war uh, as well World War Two. So we've had like the ground assault, Pacific, and then there'll be the bombers. So I think that'll be absolutely amazing, absolutely phenomenal. And that's coming out either the end of the year, the beginning of next year sometime. So hopefully this will all tie in first and second. And then we can watch, we can all watch the, the third one together. For the, the, I think that'll just be truly spectacular. Yeah. If you're enjoying the channel, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I do put the full length reactions to, to this show and other stuff on my Patreon. I'll just leave a link if you want to go over and see that. But yeah, let's watch this. I'm super excited. I don't know what to expect. The Last Patrol. Mm, I, I, yeah, it's not really giving much away, but let's try this. Um, I don't know what to expect in The Last Patrol. Um, a lot. Some people have said in the comment section it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a break compared to what I've been through in the last episode. And then the next episode, I got kicked in the face or something. So this one might be a little bit more laid back. Colin Hanks. Colin Hanks? But Tom's got his kid into this. Oh. Yes, Spears, <laughs> the boy. Man, what a run that was. Ah, uh, yeah, a lot of you have mentioned that the Spears run was actually not, it was kind of shortened in real life. It was meant to be a lot, like, tougher than that, but 
people wouldn't believe it. Oh, uh, yes. I want to know what happens to Buck. Hope he's okay, man. We had lost some uh, very good men there. Toy and Garnier had lost their legs there. Uh, Gordon was badly hit. Skip Muck died, and Muck. Eugene Rowe came to me. What? And he wanted me to see if I wanted to go look at him, and I said, no, I wouldn't be able to stand that. So I, that? I didn't go look at him. I have a feeling you're going to live through the war. Starting to ease off. Believe I might be able to live through it. So walk carefully. There's something a little different about that guy at the end. I don't know, just the way he kind of, the way he speaks, the way he holds himself. I said that the first time I saw him. He's just got this different kind of presence. Um, oh, and the, who was that then? That must have been somebody that we really, really watch a lot of in this show. To say that he asked him to go and check on Muck, uh, to see Muck. So it must be a huge character in the show. Oh my god, I, I can't wait. First Airborne had been made famous by what it did in the Battle of the Bulge. Webster. Newspapers called them the battered bastards of Bastogne, with sounds of the war still coming from just across the river. Sounds like Webster. Oh, look what I found. It is Webster. Hey he got shot at the crossroads. Did he get shot or did he get? My name's David Webster. I just got back from the hospital. I'm Sergeant Martin. This can't be everybody. Hubler, where's he? Second platoon lost more guys than we did. They're really short-handed. Oh man. What's a second, Webster? They'll find a place for you. He's missed, um, he missed Bastogne and Foy though, hasn't he? Well, are they treating him like a replacement? They're kind of treating him like he's brand new because he's missed, even though, I mean, he was, he did the jump and he was hit, he was hit at the crossroads. Some lieutenant told me to report to second. Make a malarkey, lieutenant. You come to the hospital? Yeah. I said, like that hospital. We left Holland four months ago. Oh. Well, I wasn't there the whole time. In the replacement depot. Well, I'm sure he tried to bust out and help us in Bastogne with. Oh, that was always going to happen. Back in Holland. And Garnier. And... Yeah, where is Garnier? He got hit. Oh, so he's turned up thinking he's going to be like, I'm back, guys, I'm back. And they're all like, you've so missed. It's like, Bastogne and Foy was so big for everybody, how close they all were. Why don't you go talk to Captain Spears? I'm sure he wants you with us. The guys I knew were either gone or very different from what I remembered. I was a veteran of D-Day and Market Garden and had been with the company since its formation. Yeah. But now, because I had missed Bastogne, I was treated as a replacement. I totally agree. I was starting all over again. Totally agree. Hey, look who it is. I knew that was coming. Hey, Stiggs, huh, Webb? Yeah. He's got pneumonia. Sorry what? to hear that. Yeah, what are you sorry about? He's alive, he's got a couch, goddamn blanket. You kind of feel sorry for him, though. You know, he's... They did unmarked garden and and he got hit. Yeah, but that water's cold. There's Colin Hanks. Is this the company CP for From Hanks's reason? kid? Yes, sir. <laughs> as you were. He looks fresh as well. Regiment wants patrol for prisoners. We know it's occupied, you can have fifteen men. Think very hard about who you want to lead the patrol. Gonna volunteer. Want this one to be as foolproof and as safe as possible. Lieutenant Jones, sir. Right, or West Pointer. Yes. <laughs> When'd you graduate? June 6th, sir. No. June 6th? Of last year? D Day, yes, sir. Ha. <laughs> 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 Nick, then. Sir, I'd like to volunteer for the patrol. Spears, talk to you in an hour. Yep. Lieutenant Jones? Oh, he's trying. You, you can't blame him. Request permission to go on the patrol. No. No. Hell, Heffron. Ramirez and McClung, they're gone. Bib. Yes, sir. Private Webster from 1st Platoon. Uh, Lieutenant Foley told me to go to 2nd, but Sergeant Malarkey said... Fine, 2nd. Take, uh, Lieutenant Jones. Oh, man. They're all just walking about. Are other officers in the platoon? <laughs> Webster? That's right. How you <laughs> doing, Sergeant Kane? Hey, Webster. Careful, 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 boys. Shit! Shit! No! 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 You heard it? You heard the wheezing? Oh, Jesus, he nearly got it straight away. Are we calling? Is that it? I don't know, I think so. Go, go, go! Say so that, they're getting bombs shot at them. And that is, like, that's classed as just a normal, tame, quiet morning. Malarkey, platoon sergeant. Congratulations on the battlefield commission. They're making you an officer, no? Me? No. 
You must be thinking of First Sergeant Lipton. Oh, the tech and the piss out of him. Oh, Che is Webster's well, like Che is lads. Introduce me to the men. Some are sleeping downstairs. The rest are right here. What do you know about this patrol thing? Uh, nothing. Oh, come on, Webb. You gotta know something. Come on, Webster. He's gonna, he's gonna tell them, and then they're gonna grass him up. <laughs> Captain Spears is to pick 15 men. Infantry, but they left in a hurry. It's pretty tense between the guys. You normally haven't, I haven't felt this yet. Sounds like a freight train when one comes over. Like Malaki, mind. It's across the river. No. Just give us the names, Webb. Who? You can't let on that you know. Your secret safe, Webb. Yeah. Heffron. Ah, shit. McClung. And you. Here we go. Gonna go and grass him up. There is a patrol set for tonight. And so far, Spears wants McClung. We yeah, we've just fucking heard. Webster here told us. They all looked at him so dirty there. Yep. Oh, man. They're treating him like a shit. <laughs> okay. I don't know how I feel about this. Well, let's move. Clear it up. Now move, move. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Look at that. Showers, let's go. Come on. This it's another day at the office, boys. In war, soldiers sometimes die in the fever pitch of a firefighter by artillery when they're huddled in a foxhole. Ah. Bill Keen, a Tacoa man, was killed because he was carrying a sack of potatoes from one building into another. No. In the wrong place at the wrong time. So, he was oh. dead before Doc Rowe even heard the call for a medic. So sad, you know. Okay. Michael Fassbender again? Is that a quite a big part in this? Ah, oh, boys, man, all of that, uh, the core man thrown through, you've done D D, you've done Market Garden, Bastogne, Foy, everything. Like, and then you, that happens. Just like carrying some potatoes and get hit. Fuck. I like the fact that they touched on that though. I wonder what happened to any of them after the war, if anything really bad happened to them. Because then you think all of that, that, what they've done, and then. You know what I mean? It's got his mind, got me mind thinking. Alright, I'm leading this patrol. Oh. I swear to God, if we were down to three guys, they still want us for it. Has it been a long time since your last shower, Professor? Shut up, man. I was fucking. Dude, he's always saying something to somebody, him. Well, hurry up, will you? So Malarkey's leading it, even though it's like you say. Oh, look at him, man. He looks shell shocked. Like Muck and Pencala were like so close from so was Compton they were saying, and obviously he's lost all three, really. I guess I don't really need a shower. Sergeant Malarkey's really in no condition to be on this patrol. What careful web step. And maybe if you offered, we could go in his place. If it was possible for them to switch places for the patrol, it would be a small moment of justice. The decision though was not theirs to make. The spayers. Uh, you gotta <laughs> be shitting me. What's up, guys? Yes. Like we do at the place, George. Yeah, 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 yeah. He did good, huh? <laughs> Try to get him out of the fucking moor. Come straight back. Oh, I love yeah, it. Well, that's not what I heard. Heard the oh, project finished. Yeah. Well, he's come straight back, like rubbing the Webster's face. About the patrol, I feel that I should go on the patrol, sir. I know I could use the experience. Denied. You're not gonna lead that patrol, Lieutenant Jones. Mission to speak, sir. Go on, Lieutenant. It looks like Sergeant Malarkey could use a break, sir. I'd really like to be on that patrol, sir. Absolutely. You can, you're not. He's got a point about Sergeant Malarkey. Fine, you can go. What? There'll be a briefing, CP 1700. Yes, sir. Oh, he's let him go. That was a co I thought he'd made his mind up and that's it. Secured four rubber boats, get you across the river. Who's leading? Lieutenant Jones here is the ranking officer. And he'll be along as an observer. Sergeant Martin here will lead the patrol oh. in Sergeant Malarkey's place. The whole battalion will be covering your withdrawal. We've identified targets. We've planned fire for him. We have to move fast but carefully. Johnny's going to go mental. Don't pop the first thing that moves. Clear? Yes, sir. Don't pop the first thing. Picture your assault team. McClung, Sisk, Cobb, Garcia. Webster. And Webster, this translator. <laughs> that you tell. You speak German, right, Webster? Yeah, that's my team, sir. 
Questions? Oh, but it's very tense between the guys, this one. Good. It's different. Good luck. Okay, that was very tense. Martin didn't like the way the, the way he looked at the lieutenant there. Lead guy and I, we both speak German. You wanna sit this one out? Yes, sir. Martin, one is supervised. Buddy. Three squads. Thank you, sir. Four, two fives. Yeah. Anyway, about move them up. You men going on patrol? <laughs> Nothing rattles, nothing shines. He was trying to he was trying to get out of it though. He did seem to try to get out of it, and obviously he's he's let Joe instead. I can kind of see what they're trying to do in this episode so far. Very well written. Those crowds are gonna catch some hell. So I hear. I'm not personally going in. Hey, for those of you who've been in the military, that must be weird having somebody come in who has no military experience who's expected to lead from the front when they've Kind of like you lead by example, not just what you've read and maybe your education that's got you to where you are. I don't know how I'd cope if someone, if I'd been out on patrols and done a lot of stuff, um, and then somebody came in and they were meant to lead us, and it was they've never seen any action. I, I don't know. I don't think I'd be. I mean, obviously, as a soldier, you would listen to your superiors, but I don't know how you'd cope with that mentally, especially if you've seen kind of. You know, you've seen, you've seen your own lieutenants getting shot, or your own sergeants and people in command getting hurt. And then they bring in somebody from West Point, fresh as a daisy, and, and, and meant to take his place? Hmm. Getting back safely could be successfully accomplished in as little as 10 minutes. Whoa. The same mission could be met with disaster and result in nothing more than 15 Americans killed or wounded in action. Don't want anyone to die. Especially these are all people you kind of know. Oh, oh, what are you doing? They've lost three guys. Come on, Johnny. Let's cut it to the side, let the lads through. Whoa. I haven't seen them do this before. It's like a full-on stealth mission. He wanted to go on, but he still looks like a rabbit caught in headlights. He ran in so quick, man. Oh, dude. Oh, dude, you ran in. It blew your fucking face off. Oh, no. Jackson. They're going to have to hurry up. They're going to have to hurry up. Come on. Go on. Go on. Oh my god, I don't know what to say. Let's go, move, move! Go on, Johnny, get them moving. They're on their side of the water. The Germans are going to be kicking right off. Yeah. Yes, go! Oh, Lord. There it is. Oh. Whoa, man, look at this. My God, the production of this is insane. So who's shooting as a jaw? Leave God. Is that Frank pulling them off there? <laughs> so Jackson got the side of his face blown off. Oh, oh Jackson. Oh, Jackson. He's not going to die, is he? Please. 
Hat die Gott zum internen Bladen? Yes, that's dark, that's raw. How are you, Jane? Light, I need some light, give me some light. Alright, let's get him out of here, let's get him out of here. Oh, he's cry. oh my god, I'm gonna fucking. It's okay, Jess, let's get him out of here. Take it easy, man. Jess, we're not gonna die. We're not gonna die, I need you to hang on. Jackson! Oh no, off. Oh, that's awful. Oh no. Oh, that's just gonna be like. Oh, I was. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Ah, oh, ah, oh, that's awful. Ah, oh, that's fucking Jackson, man. Eugene Jackson was 20 years old. He'd lied about his age when he joined the army at 16. His family, I'm sure, got a telegram from the War Department saying he died a hero on an important mission that would help win the war. In fact, Eugene lost his life on a stretcher in a dank basement in Hagenau, crying out in agony while his friends looked on helplessly. He was just one more casualty in a war that was supposed to be all but over. Oh my god, that's fucking heartbreaking. Oh my god. I can't de I can't even process that. Private Jackson took a grenade for aggression from the enemy OP. It was his own grenade. Well executed. It's not your fault. And there's sometimes in the show you're just left without kind of words. That was brutal, that that was so Jackson's dead. Yeah, we heard. Call a patrol tonight. Is he like, he's almost kind of, he tried to get out of it, but I suppose at the same time, he's almost proven himself again for a second time. I want another patrol. Wow, man, that's just. It's the third prisoner that was too far gone to bring back. Why is he just lying on the bank? Maybe we should put him out of his misery. He's just lying on the other side of the bank. What you looking at, Webster? Oh, sh stop it. That's what I thought, college boy. Cobb's been a dick. Taking his side, Johnny? Yeah. I am. And how do you really, how do you, like, release the pressure? Well, you can't put yourself in that position because you just would never know unless you were there. I wouldn't disrespect the guys by trying to. Sink's been on the phone all day bragging it up, but I think he's just showing off now. He gave him a successful patrol, now he wants to. Oh, no. Yeah, what a... Same roster as last night. What a legend. What? The same people? Y'all did a damn fine job on a tough mission last night. I want to wish you good luck tonight because I'd be expecting more of the same. In fact, I'm sure you remind them how proud I am of what they did. Oh, cheers. Yes, sir. So I'll brief him now, sir. Go on, do you do it, Winters? No, I'll do it. Oh, see, he knows he's such a boy. He knows what to do. He... I've got respect for Winters. You men did an excellent job last night. So tough. Proud. I just saw Colonel Sink. He's proud too. In fact, he's so proud he wants you to do another patrol across the river tonight. Oh my God! It means we'd have to venture farther into town this time. Oh my God! How does he break this to the man? This is fucking brutal. Enemy moving here and here. We're not changing the plan, any sir. No. It'll be zero two hundred hours instead of zero one hundred. Ah, oh, that's a change. Jay is. That clear? Yes, sir. Good, because. Uh, Want you all to get a full night's sleep tonight. What? Which means in the morning you will report to me that you made it across the river into German lines. We're unable to secure any live prisoners. What? Understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look sharp for tomorrow. Ah. Uh, Moving I... off the line. 
Can't deal with it. Can't. <laughs> Moving off the line. <laughs> I literally can't. That's. Oh my god, Winters. I got. Oh, Tom. It almost broke me hard, that. You might be honest. Oh, oh, there, that's the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dan Jones. Sir, join us at the company CP. Oh, Winters has basically said just don't go, but in the morning come and say that you did. Oh my god, the fellas will absolutely love that. First Sergeant Lipton, your honorable discharge as an enlisted man. Just keep him coming, Lewis. Honorable yeah, discharge. Well, congratulations, Corbett. Thank you, sir. Lipton, congratulations. Thanks. Lipton. Yeah. Welcome back, sir. Yeah, it's Harry here. Congratulations, thanks. Yes, Lip. I didn't expect to see you this soon. I figured you'd be nursing that scratch for another month or two. Yes, Lip. <laughs> Regiment has seen fit to promote you to first lieutenant. Whoa. Uh, Watch one staff up there. Well done. Well done, Jones. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Wow, lots of promotions going on. I'm so happy for Lip. She lost another platoon leader, huh, Whip? So a second patrol never happened. Wow. Word was Captain Nixon wrote up a bogus report and regiment never got wise. What? As we pulled out of Hagenau, many of us in Easy Company felt that a corner had been turned and we all might make it home alive. Uh. Colonel Sink's a bit unhappy with the appearance of your uniform. He says it's not befitting to your rank. What? Oak leaves. What? Congratulations, Major. What has just happened? Winters was made major. I have no words. The show is just getting better and better. I'm just I'm in awe of the show at the moment. I just can't. <laughs> Don't let Johnny Martin say you do that. He'll kick off. They did like click, didn't they? It was good. Webster's well, back with the lads. I think he's kind of been accepted again. Do you think? Put your hand out. Go on, Joe. Here. Yes, leave, got lads. He's back. Oh. Major Winters. <laughs> I can't deal with it. It's so good. I wondered if people back home would ever know what it cost the soldiers to win this war. In America, things were already beginning to look like peacetime. Racetracks and nightclubs were booming. Wow. You couldn't get a hotel room in Miami Beach. It was so crowded. God, look at the boys, man. Even... You will never know of the price paid by soldiers in terror, agony, and bloodshed if they'd never been to places like Normandy, Bastogne, or Hagenau. Oh, this next episode is going to be absolutely insane. Okay. Um, again, <clears throat> truly, truly phenomenal, spectacular, um, different. That episode, it kind of focused more on Webster coming back. Um, yeah, just kind of just uh, briefly what they touched on at the end there about, you know, the, the things in Miami, the nightclubs were going on and everything was, you know, everything was like life as normal. And these lads are over either in Bastogne or Hagenau and you know the young lads who like like especially like Jackson who would you know who had enlisted at the age of 16 under you know wasn't even allowed at that age um and these lads are literally fighting and dying every day the the, the ducking mortar shells grenades are getting you know the watching the friends get hit um it, it and, and yeah, life goes on. Life's normal. It, it, it's hard to kind of wrap your head around the the fact that some people did this, um, day in and day out. Especially, you know, in war, like these have been these lives. Are, they're not all the focused on the airborne, but across along, you know, across the whole of the, a lot of the military, you know, uh, this happened. And uh, like, obviously, I'm focusing on the airborne, but it's kind of like these lives were every every day. There was missions and. Uh, and it was life and death, like not yet, like actual life and death every single minute of the day. And yeah, you're just thinking, you know, you probably got friends who were back at home. They were just out clubbing, out out on the drink and, you know, out courting people. And that's their, that's their life. And, you know, each to their own. 
Um, and then you've got these boys who are you know, the way the, the the way they should be because it, it takes a, a, a certain person to to not only you know to not only pass to, to be a, to come on anywhere or even to have passed the training to be here and be alive. So it takes a special individual to do what these did, um, and the world would be a, diff, a, a hell of a different place without it. Um, without these type of people, um, yeah. Uh, major windows major windows brilliant um i'm over the moon for that um so the focused on webster um, i could see at the beginning when he came back obviously webster got hit in at the crossroads um when they were taking the machine gun nest um uh yeah he came back and straight away i could see that i mean obviously that's how they wrote this episode but you could see the difference of how they treat him even though he was a veteran of d-day and market garden they, they looked at him like a replacement um how how would i feel um probably the same even though um he's he's done he's shown his colors he's shown that he's a soldier um the fact that he went away and he spent two months there's two months it might have even been longer than that it might have even been four i'm sorry if it's a, if, if i'm mistaken on that but he was away for a long time they've seen other people popeye um Frank, uh, Joe Toy, oh, the, the list is endless of people who leap got who got shit in the neck, you know that type of thing of, of people who have been taken to the aid station. The last thing they want to do is risk losing being in the the, the company that they are in, um, or being redeployed elsewhere. And not only that, the, the brothers, the love, the love of the brothers, they want to be back. They want to watch their back. They want that brother to watch their back as well. They don't want to go to a to a different squad they don't know who they're fighting for and they don't know if that person is going to be there for them like if you know if you were going back and you're you know and, and you've got people who you know and you've trained with they're the people you want you know who you can trust you know who you can rely on yeah and no, i completely see that so the fact that he's come back and obviously they've gotten all of them are just like you know what you know who are you kind of thing even though he's a veteran better in a day day market garden but because he missed Bastogne and Foy which was one it was such a a huge you know emotionally charged uh, emotionally draining bonding uh, those people who were in Bastogne and Foy who fought that battle they'll have come out looking at each other totally different um so it was almost like he was a replacement hmm there's a bit of a uh that must have been pretty tough for him if that was the case in real life he came back and he felt like a replacement but you know it seemed at the end there uh, i don't know if that's obviously that might have just been put in for you know creative you know a bit of cre creative leeway type of thing but the fact that leave got was kind of like okay held his hand but it signified you know you're back you're one of us now you've done your patrol um you know you you, you know you're part of the team again um danger. another another absolutely phenomenal episode uh i have been told Episode nine is uh, is one of the most brutal. Uh, they're going to be entering Germany. Uh, I'm expecting it to be extremely tough, and I've heard episode ten is more wholesome than anything else. So yeah, I've got the next episode is going to be it's going to be you know what I'm like. I'm not afraid to show me emotions. I never have done. I've never tried to hide them. So I'm guessing this next episode is going to hit me right in the feels, so to speak. Yeah, if you've enjoyed this, I will put a, the the playlist down here for the other ones that I have seen and I'll stick a little subscribe button up there and I just want to say thank you so much as always for all your comments all your you know your words of encouragement and everything that is the same to those of you who served in the military and who've commented you know there's there's no words so thank you for your service and uh thank you for, for commenting and uh yeah and I'll see you all very very soon for episode nine <laughs>